Hi, it's Dorothy Guiding with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today I'm here for Mercy Tiara Kits and I'm going to be creating a double page spread featuring the most recent release called Dream Big. This kit includes material from a few different American crafts collections including Poppy and Pear, Rainbow Avenue, and Cool Girl. So here's the material I'll be using. The printed paper is from Poppy and Pear and the rest is a mix of all the collections. You can find information and inspiration for Mercy Tierra kits on their website, Instagram, and on Facebook. And there will be a bunch of links below. Before starting, let's have a look at my jumping off point. It's a creative scrapper sketch that was designed exclusively for Mercy Tierra kits. It's on the back of the March newsletter. There is a newsletter that comes with each one of the kits, and it's also the challenge on the Facebook group for the month of March. My plan is to flip it 90 degrees so that that block border is at the top, and I'm gonna stretch it across the two pages. I have six photos, so I'm gonna keep one photo larger and treat it as my focal point. The other five will be smaller and I plan to place them towards the bottom of the page and kind of fill up that area. So let's get started. So here's what's on my desk. In advance I prepared a frame style foundation page with four sheets of paper. I gutted two of them and there is a tutorial on my channel where I explain how to do that so that will be listed and linked below. Here are my photos. So I have six photos. One is larger. They are all matted. That black cardstock is the paper I gutted from behind the foundation page. And here's the paper I'll be using for the block. So I've already cut into it. I'm showing you the sketch there. So I cut some of the blocks. That pear paper, I use both sides. One side is yellow, and for the black one, I just use the black side. And I still have more blocks to cut out, so you'll see that a little bit later on in the process. Here are my embellishing. So I pre-selected some of the ephemera pieces. They come from two different ephemera packs. One of them is from the main kit, the other from the embellishment add-on, and both are from the Poppy and Pear collection. I also have a cut apart sheet that was a piece of paper that I cut up and a whole bunch of embellishing. And I'll show you all of that later on in the process. What I wanna do right now is continue cutting those squares. And I cut mine with my die cutting machine. When I create grids or pages with blocks like this, I do like to get out my square dies just because I end up cutting perfect squares. For some strange reason, when I cut a square with my straight trimmer, it's never quite right. Anyway, easy enough to do. I probably do it too quickly. So I cut out a few more here, and you can see I have to be very, very careful. My squares measure two and seven eighths of an inch. Um, so basically what I had to do with that pear paper is cut it into four three inch strips. And you can see I do not have a lot of wiggle room here, so I'm being very careful and taping down my three inch strips with that low tack mint tape. I'm not gonna make you watch all of this, but you're gonna see in a moment, I do ink up all of these blocks. So the ink I am using is Morning Mist by Versifying Claire. It's just kind of like a smoky gray. It's an ink I happen to really love. I use it all the time. So what I'm gonna do right now is just play around with these blocks to create that border at the top of the page. So all I'm doing here is looking for a pattern that pleases me. To my surprise and delight, these blocks work perfectly with a tiny margin right across the top of one page. I honestly didn't think that would happen. For the second row, I am offsetting them just like on the sketch. And again, all I'm doing here is looking for a pattern that pleases me. And essentially, I'm just doing one, two, three, one, two, three. So what I'm gonna do right now is start adhering. I'm not gonna make you watch all of it, but I am going to show you the important parts where I could possibly share a trick or two. The first one here is using my T-square. So once I position the square where I want it, 
I put my T-square in place and I will continue adhering. I did place the block on the far right after doing the one on the far left. And that way I was able to gauge the distance for the margins for the other two in between. And I'm basically just eyeballing it. So once I complete this first row, I do turn off my camera. I continue the very same procedure on the right hand page. And in a minute, you're going to see I come back and I'm about to start on my second row. So what I did for the second row is I took the block that was going to go in the middle and literally cut it in half. You can see me adhering it to the far right of that page. And now what I'm going to do is continue with these blocks moving towards the left. So again, I'm not going to make you watch all of this, but in a moment you're going to see I continued doing this and I did the very same thing over on the right hand page and to finish off and I did this on the opposite end as well. I simply placed the block in the row, took my pencil, marked where I should cut it, then trimmed it in my trimmer. When I do this, I always trim big as opposed to small and then come in and trim again. It's always good to trim too big, then come in and trim again, then trim too small right off the bat. Okay, now I'm placing my photo. So my focal point photo is gonna go over there in the top left and I'm going to line up my photos in the bottom, basically pushed up towards the right. So there's going to be a white space on the far left of that bottom row. Now I'm adhering my photos and you may notice when I'm adhering them, when I flip them over, there's another colored paper underneath. And what that is, is scrap cardstock. For each one of these photos, I added scrap cardstock behind it just to raise up the photo a little bit. I'm doing that instead of foam adhesive. When I am finished with paper and I have scraps and bits and pieces left, I don't throw them out. I don't recycle them. If the paper has a certain thickness, think, I don't know, Pink Fresh Studio, Carta Bella, you know, scraps of basil thick cardstock, I save it all. And what I do is I use it for purposes like this, putting it behind photos just to bump them up a bit. So I did that with all my photos. Now I'm showing you that I have all of my embellishing around me. Now what I did off camera is I cut myself out a bunch of leaves. This is a leaf die. I'm going to show it to you in a minute from Stampin' Up. I use it all the time. I absolutely love it. I don't think it exists anymore, but basically I speak about this often in my videos. Having a few different leaf dies and flower dies in your stash go a long, long way. I love using leaves as the base layers to embellishment clusters. I'm also showing you the ephemera pieces. So even the pieces that I pre-selected before, I went through them again and narrowed them down yet again. So basically I kept all of the white and gold floral and leaf bits, anything that was yellow and green. I am showing you that I did my journaling on vellum and it's cut out in a square. I also have my title on wax paper, so it's beautiful. That comes from the foam phrase sheet, the Thickers collection. That's from the Rainbow Avenue collection. And I also have the word Jamaica and 2024. Those are in little puffy stickers and that is from the Cool Girl collection. So I'm all ready to start embellishing. Oh yes, and I'm showing you the puffy stickers as well. Super, super cute. I plan to create three embellishment clusters in a visual triangle across the two pages and I'm kind of pointing them out. The main one's going to be around the focal point photo. I'm going to have another one in that bottom row somewhere and the final one will be over on the far right in that top blocky area as well. So I am going to start with the focal point photo. That's what I'm going to focus on. And I decide to put the cluster to the right of the photo because I know I want this to be a significant embellishment cluster, my biggest embellishment cluster. And if I were to put it on the left side of the photo, my photo would end up bumped more towards the middle, sorry, of the page. 
Because all of the photos at the bottom are bumped up towards the right, I want my focal point photo to be bumped up towards the left. So for that reason, I'm building my cluster on the right of the photo. You can see I came in with the leaves, then that white floral piece. Then I came in with a little ephemera piece that says real life in green. That stays there for a while, but it doesn't stay until the very end. I plan to put my title kind of overlapping the photo there. I'm more or less happy with that. I know I want to add some finishing touches, but at this point, what I'm going to do is just adhere this. So I'm starting with the leaves there, and the adhesive I'm using is called Sticky Specs by Ecstasy Crafts. You can see I lift up a piece of wax paper, and on that yellow paper, there's a bunch of stick. Basically, I place the detailed die cut on top of it. It picks up the adhesive and it's ready to stick to my page. Now I'm coming in with that white floral piece, tucking it behind the photo as well. Um, and I'm coming in with that green piece. Again, it stays there for a while, but not until the very end. I have a few more of these white and gold pieces tucking it under. Anyway, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just basically building out. And the other two clusters that I create will end up being smaller. This is my main embellishment cluster. It's around my focal point photo, and it's also going to house my title. So I keep fussing here just with the little bits and pieces. I do fuss quite a bit in this video. You are going to see a little bit of indecision later on when it comes to the other two embellishment clusters as well. So finally, what I'm going to do is adhere this photo down. You can see that white and black striped paper from behind. Again, that is just scrap cardstock. Now what I'm going to do is adhere the title. You can see it kind of overlaps the photo but goes on into that embellishment cluster. And off camera, I continued with that. I adhered Jamaica towards the bottom, and I actually ended up lifting the word beautiful, which wasn't easy. Those things really, really stick, those foam phrase stickers. Anyway, I ended up moving it down just a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is work on the other two clusters. And at this point, I think it's going to go around that photo in the bottom left of the right page. You can see me tucking in green leaves along with a floral piece. I have this teapot, and these are photos of me at a restaurant in Negril, Jamaica, um, at a breakfast place. I was there for breakfast, and I really want to use that teapot but I don't necessarily want it to stand out, but I thought it would kind of camouflage itself on top of those pears, so that's where it stays for a while. I tuck in a cut apart sheet that says details on the side of the photo. I like that because if you look at the details of this restaurant, it really is quite something. It's a very interesting place. Now I'm looking for my journaling. So I'm thinking I want it on that black block, but you can't really see it. So I'm additioning scraps of paper to possibly put something underneath it. Off camera, I cut myself out another little scrap of paper, a little yellow square. And I'm happy with that for the time being. But in order to adhere the vellum to the page, I need to stick something on top of it because when you put adhesive on vellum, you can see through it. So that's what you see me doing right now, just kind of playing around with pieces, trying to find something to put on top of that vellum so that I can actually adhere it to my block underneath. At this point, I take the word details, which was on the block underneath. It was actually tucked behind the block underneath. And I decide, well, that's a perfect word to put on top of my journaling. So I trim it down. Now you can see me coming in and I'm adhering that block behind that photo at the bottom of the page, tucking in the leaves, tucking in the flowers. I already adhered the teapot. I'm going to tell you right now, this all gets moved around. So I'm happy with that right now, but when I go to adhere my vellum to the page, that's when things start becoming a problem for me. So at this point, I think I'm going to use the word details. You saw me come in and I added a little bit of ink to it. 
I'm going to adhere the block now. I start with the leaves. I come in with the flower as well, and I put the block down. But when I go to adhere the vellum, at this point, I'm going to notice, I think, I'm probably getting a little bit ahead of myself right now. You can see me adding adhesive to the vellum because I know it's going to be covered up. I put the word details on top of it, and at this point, you can't really see it on camera. I realized it was a little off center, so off camera, I trimmed it down a bit. But I'm not liking my page suddenly, and this will happen to me towards the end of a layout. So what I ended up doing is removing that green ephemera piece that was by the focal point photo, and I tucked in a little yellow piece instead. So I ended up being happy. Of with the yellow. It was kind of repeating the yellow in details and the teapot, but the yellow wasn't in a visual triangle. So what I did a moment ago is I removed the word details and I put it where you see it now towards the bottom of the page. So now I have a visual triangle with the yellow with that circle up by the focal point photo, the word details at the bottom of the page, and my teapot. But the problem is I don't have anything to adhere my journaling box, the vellum to the page. So at this point, I am decide I'm going to just move around all of my embellishing. I'm basically deconstructing my embellishment clusters. You can see I took it from behind the original photo that I have at the bottom, moved it over one, and I have the teapot, two flowers, some leaves. Anyway, this is a complete play-by-play, -play, but the problem is that cluster is starting to get huge. Basically, I took two clusters and tried to combine it in one, but I want to keep the cluster by the focal point photo the biggest one. So I just stopped for a minute and got my head around this, and I'm showing you what I did. I ended up putting one flower in that cluster over on the right, and the extra one, I put it towards the top of the focal point photo. I just showed you that a moment ago. I also have the leaves in the teapot, and for the journaling, you can see it kind of bumped up towards the top of that yellow block. What I did was I actually stapled it there. Now I'm coming with a few finishing touches. I'm adding a few leaves just in front of that teapot there, and I end up adding a few more leaves just above the focal point photo, just basically in behind that extra white flower that I ended up adding there. So I am happier with that. At least I have three embellishment clusters that are in different sizes, the biggest one being around that focal point photo, the second one being around my journaling box, and now I have a real tiny one. It's off camera right now. It's off screen, but at the bottom where it says 2024 detail. So I'm happy with that. I'm getting out the puppy stickers, and I decide to add a few yellow ones around the pages. So that's what I'm doing right now. I add a flower up by the journaling box, and then I kind of play around with other ones. I'm kind of wanting to add three and possibly in a visual triangle. So I'm trying to tuck one in and around that title area there. The problem is it's a different color yellow than that circle that's there, and it's kind of bothering me. I end up leaving it there for a while, and I end up putting one on top of that teapot. I'm more or less happy with this. What I end up doing is switching a little tiny bit when the camera stops here, and that does happen to me at the very end often of a layout, especially when I have a tripod over my head. So here is the finished layout. What I did was I moved around the puppy sticker. So instead of having three placed in a visual triangle, now there are only two and they're placed just beside the journaling box. I did add two more staples just above the word details and on the yellow circle that is to the right of the focal point photo. Finally, I rounded the corners on the white cardstock. And before doing it, honestly, I felt this was a really bold move, but I am quite happy with the results. It adds contrast to all of those blocks on the page. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. 
If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, Scrapbooking Quebec, I would be honored and thrilled if you did. And if you are a subscriber, thank you very, very much. Make sure to check out the Mercy Tierra Kit shop and all the other links listed below. Take care and I will see you soon on YouTube. Bye-bye.